it is my technically third day um, in this beautiful country and it's the very first day where I'm doing a proper tour. This morning I am going with licorice food tours um, to explore the yummies that are um, to be had in the city and learn a little bit more about the culture. Um, I do have a rental car. <laughs> it was quite um, an adventure to get it yesterday. But anyways, um, I am driving on for my American friends the wrong side of the road. Um, and that's always a fun experience. Um, it's just three miles from my Airbnb to Independence Square where the tour begins. So let's go. I have been a fan of food tours for years because they include my three favorite things education, trying local flair, and exploring new places with a local. Knowing nothing about Barbados food culture and history prior to landing meant I was destined for this three hour food tour in Bridgetown. I met my guide at Independence Square where she told the story of Barbados becoming an independent nation in the 1960s from Great Britain due to the efforts of Errol Barrel. She talked about how pork found its way to the island via the Portuguese who were the first to discover the island and dove into other cultural facts which would explain why we are going to have certain foods during our tour. In total, we had seven stops with more than enough food to feel beyond satiated and all for $75 US. Our first stop was a peculiar soup at a cafe next to the Constitution River. Stop number one, having some Bajan soup, which seems to have a variety of meats in it. I was told to search for dumplings. Sadly, there's no dumpling in mine, but here we go. Mmm. Mm. It basically tastes like chicken soup with lamb and chicken. It's delicious. Post the chicken and lamb dumpling soup, we continued across the Constitution River to another restaurant to give barbecue pig's tail a try. According to our guide, pork has been given an elevated status in trendy barbecue restaurants throughout the country. Paired with this tender and very fatty cut of meat was cassava root, plantains, and a simple green salad. It was really tasty. Continuing on our quest to nosh on as many Barbadian morsels as possible, we made our way through the tourist shopping part of town, where most duty-free items can be found at the colonnade and shops alike, and then into the locals area to try the very famous and very tasty hot legendary fish cakes served fresh out of the fryer and in paper bags. from the south in the United States, it kind of tastes like a hush puppy, but with fish and super delicious. A few blocks away, we enjoyed our fourth treat of the tour, a meat roll. Meat rolls in hand, we walked past the location of the Jewish synagogue built in the 1600s and learned that the Jews were responsible for revolutionizing the sugarcane industry, which led to Barbados being a very prosperous nation. Stop five was at another local spot called the Palmetto Mall and Market, where we were given sips of the famous Sorel drink, also known as the Christmas drink. 
Organic and consumed predominantly around the holidays, this sweet treat was a perfect palate cleanser after the heavy beef eaten prior. Thank you. <laughs> this is supposed to taste like Christmas. Mm -hmm. it smells like Christmas. Mm -hmm. It sort of tastes like mulled wine without... Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. We had quite a way to walk in the Barbadian sun and heat, so I took my Sorrel to go and enjoyed refreshing sips as we walked through a shopping street where a guy explained the funny rounded plants. They are known as breadfruit and essentially are prepared the same way in which potatoes are. Hmm, maybe I'll tie them on my next trip to Barbados. Sop 6 was a hearty meal of peas and rice paired with a very palate confusing beverage known as the Mabi drink. Mabi is made from the bark of the Mabi tree and starts sweet and enjoyable then suddenly turns rudely bitter. It was not my favorite, but worth a try nonetheless. Licorice definitely saved the best for last with a sweet end to our tour at local Agape Chocolate Factory and Ice Cream Shop. With so many flavors to choose from, it was really hard to decide what I wanted. But I finally chose the vegan chocolate ice cream and then enjoyed watching some of the chocolate manufacturing take place. Mmm, so sweet and delicious. The ice cream is the perfect ending to a wonderful food tour here in Barbados. Uh, I went with the 70% Granada chocolate bar chocolate ice cream. Uh, it's all vegan, made with coconut milk. It is so sweet and delicious and refreshing on this hot, hot day. Thanks for the food tours, this was fun. I spent one week in Barbados and kept it relatively low key. And in my relaxed state, I still managed to find some gems worth your time when visiting the island nation. After all that food, you may want to burn off a few calories and the best place to do that is Carlisle Bay, where there are several companies you can hire to show you the strip wrecks offshore that are teeming with sea life, including sea turtles. If you have your own snorkel, you can swim out and find them on your own. Next up, Mount Gay Distiller, the oldest commercial rum distillers in the Caribbean and cost less than $25 US to enjoy a tour and trust me, a very heavy pour tasting of rum punch, rum cream, and many of their rum varieties. It was so much fun and I really had to pace myself. If you enjoy shopping local, head south of Bridgetown to Hastings Market. Open Wednesdays and Saturdays, you will find some local produce, candy crafts, like bags, clothing, and artwork, and some other yummies that you might want to take home to your friends and family. Another must if you enjoy the finer things in life is to treat yourself to a lovely cocktail and brunch at the very trendy Cliff Beach Club where the views of the white sands and clear blue waters are a gorgeous sight for your eyes. The food is delicious, the cocktails refreshing, you gotta go here. Mmm, I can't wait to go back. If you like a bit of water sports and are up for trying surfing, considering heading south of Miami Beach, Barbados, to a surfing cove where you can rent a board for about 30 US dollars per day and pedal out to catch some waves. And while you're out there, you might be surprised to see some camera camera shy sea turtles all around you. A great place for food and more water sports is at Surfer Break near the south end of Barbados. Here you can get some yummy grilled kingfish and take kiteboard lessons. Super cool, right? On the southern point of the island, I drove past many sugarcane fields on my way to the very beautiful Harrisonist which had a very sleepy sunset and was gorgeous to sit and relax away from all others. Very few people here. The water looks like a blueberry Jolly Rancher. Sand is super soft and white. Barbados, what a magical place. Beautiful sunsets, really friendly people, and a true Caribbean paradise. Visit postcardstome.com if you'd like to learn more or request a postcard from my travels sent to you. Thanks.